In this lesson, we're going to discuss merging cells. And merging cells is quite a controversial topic in Excel. So I'm going to show you how to merge cells. I'm going to show you some of the issues that this can cause, and then we're going to take a look at a better way of doing it. So let's start out by talking about exactly what we're doing when we merge cells. Now you can see that I have a data set just here. This is just a selection of the columns from the data set that we were using previously. And you'll notice here that in cell A3, we have sales 2011, and then we have some records that relate to 2011 sales. We then have sales 2012 and the same thing, sales 2013, and then sales 2014. So these are going to act like headers just to break up the data and make it really obvious which sales pertain to which years. Now we could leave these little labels where it says sales 2011, for example, in the cell that they're currently contained in. So this is in cell A3 currently. However, this would look a lot better if it was kind of centered across our data. So somewhere in the middle here. Now, when you type something into a cell, it is contained entirely within that cell. So if you're thinking that you can maybe select all of these cells and then in the alignment group, click on center, it's only going to center that text within the cell that it's contained in. It's not going to center it across the selection. So a way that people generally tend to get around this and get the effect that they want is to use the merge and center option. Because what Merge and Center will do is it will merge together all of the selected cells and effectively make them one cell. So you can then use your horizontal alignment tool to center the text into the middle of this big merged cell. So if we go to the Home tab in the alignment group, we have a Merge and Center option just here. Now it's worth noting that if we click the drop down, we have a few other options in here, but the one that we want is Merge and Center. Now, as soon as I do that, check out what happens. The individual cells now all become one cell, and this cell is effectively A3. And because we chose to merge and center, it centered that text in the middle of the merged cell. So what we could then do is maybe change the background color of this to, let's go for a light purple, and that kind of gives the effect that I was looking for. I could then do this for the rest of these headings. Now, of course, once you've done it once, you can use the Format Painter to copy that formatting. So I'm going to click in cell A3. Let's double click on the Format Painter. Let's paint that across just here. And we're going to do the same for this one. And then if we scroll down, we're going to do the same for this one as well. And escape to deactivate the Format Painter. So that is the exact effect that I was looking for, and we've achieved it very simply using Merge and Center. However, there is a caveat to using this method. When you do use Merge and Center, it then becomes a lot more difficult to make cell selections, and it can sometimes cause problems with any formulas that you have. Hi, from everyone at Simon Says It. We hope you're enjoying this training lesson. Please like this video to show your support for the channel. If you want to take your learning further, earn a certificate for this course, and gain access to over 200 courses ad-free, click up there and go to simonsaysit.com. Thanks for watching and back to the course. So let me show you what I mean. If I now decide that I want to go in and I want to select all of the values in the quantity column, check out what happens. If I click in cell F2 and start to drag down to make my selection, it won't just let me select the quantity column. Because we have that merge cell in there, effectively one cell, it expands to the width of that and then it kind of uses that width the entire way down. Even if I was to use a keyboard shortcut, control shift down arrow, you can see it only goes to there and I would need to do it again and again and it just doesn't work well with this merge cell sitting in there. So making selections then becomes a problem. Now we can get around this and achieve the same effect, but using a method that still allows us to make selections and ensures that our formulas will still work correctly. So let's undo and try this again. So we're back where we started. And what we're going to do is we're going to select this row of cells, but instead of going to merge and center, we're going to open up our alignment settings. 
We're going to go to horizontal alignment and if we click the drop down, we have an option in here called center across selection. So if we click on this and choose OK, it's going to do something very similar. The cell looks like it's one cell and it centers that text in the middle. So I can then go in and I can apply my background fill color and I get exactly the same effect. The difference here is that it hasn't actually merged the cells, it just looks like it has. Notice that I can still click in cell A3 and it is just cell A3. I can click in cell B3, C3, D3, E3, so on and so forth. So these are all still individual cells, they haven't been merged into one big cell called A3. And what that means is that if I want to go in and select the quantity column, I can still do that because we still have our individual cells there. So this method gives us the same nice effect, but it causes us far less problems. Now I have seen some people, particularly when this topic is discussed on LinkedIn, say that there are certain scenarios where merging and centering is better than centering across selection. And you may well come across those in your working life. But in terms of the look and feel and also the usability, my recommendation is to go with center across selection whenever you can. So now we can simply double click the format painter and copy this formatting across to the other rows. And just to finish off this lesson, when we were looking at merge and center, if you click the drop down, notice that we have other options in here as well. So if you are going to use this method, you don't necessarily have to merge and center the text. You could just choose to merge across. So this will merge all of the selected cells together, but it's not going to center the text. The text will stay on the left hand side where it was originally. We can choose to just merge cells. So that's just going to merge the cells together. It's not going to do anything with the text. And then we have an unmerge cells option, which will basically allow us to come out of that merge mode and split the big merge cell into separate cells again. So just be aware that you do have other options in there aside from merge and center. Have a little play around with those, have a little practice, and I will see you in the next lesson. Congratulations on reaching the end of this training video. Continue your training in Excel 365 for beginners with the next video in the series by clicking over here. For more related training videos, click over here to watch this popular playlist of free learning resources. To see more videos like this one, click below to subscribe.